I'm Rick from Cartridge Classic Cars. On this video, we're installing door skins. We're back on the 73 Challenger. Our parts arrived. We're gonna install a Dynacorn left-hand door skin and an AMD right-hand door skin. Normally, I would say you really wanna stick with one parts manufacturer so everything lines up, but today's day and age with parts availability and shortages, this is what we got. So we're gonna be able to compare the two, see how they go on and the differences. Um, we're gonna, these are the doors we're gonna use as our base, our frames. You could see actually the AMD's at a little bit of a disadvantage as this door was hit really bad. We got about three quarter inch of filler on this whole door and the inner structure's kind of bent a little bit. Looking at this car though, and this happened in the 80s from what the owner was saying. Um, looking at this uh, door though, the body lines and everything look good so we're going to try to fix the bend it doesn't affect the window and everything else we're going to take it apart and see what we got so that's the one with that one this door skin right here a little bit of rust here there's some pitting down there you could fix this door skin no problem however if you watch any of our other videos on the 73 challenger we are literally replacing every other external body component front to rear at that point why not one more door skin? That's what the owner and I talked about. Everything will be brand new, aftermarket metal, and it'll give him the car he wants. So stay tuned. I'm gonna show you how we do the door skins, how to protect them for the future, and we'll compare the two door skins and see how they fit on each other. The first step in this process as we speed it up is gonna be removing the hinges. You need to get them obviously out of the way to be able to cut the skin itself off. We are also going to put new hinges on this door. If you go through this process, make sure you either buy new hinges or go through your hinges and rebuild them. It's really not worth it spending all this time on the skin to then go back through and be putting used hinges that have plenty of play in them. Turn our attention to removing the door skin. You see I'm using a four inch angle grinder and I'm basically using a dragon motion where I'm pulling the angle grinder side to side. The reason I'm doing the pull in versus you know, going straight or pushing is it has less of a chance to dig in. Once we actually cut the slit open in the door skin, you can see I come back through. I'll, you'll see the door will actually split. That's when you know you've succeeded in cutting the edge of the skin without cutting the internal door frame. Once you do that, now you can go take your air chisel and there's a couple spot wells. There's about four or five of them on all sides of the door and on, on the bottom. And you just basically rip them right up. At this point, you see right now, I'm cutting the inside door bracket that's holding to the skin. I'm using basically where the, they stitch welded the front and they stitch welded the back. So I'm getting in there with the cutoff wheel without hurting the bracket and I'm just digging right into it. You can just drill out the spot welds. You need to look at your door skin first and see what parts you have. We'll get to that part in the video a little bit sooner in great detail and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about and the difference on the AMD and the Dynacorn skins. As we pull this door frame off, you could see how bad it's damaged with the inner structure, how it was hit really hard in that one area. And then furthermore, you can, if you could tell on the video, this skin is really warped. There's Bondo packed in it. This thing probably weighed 30 pounds heavier than the other skin. Now that we got this door skin out of the way, let's turn our attention to the other door panel itself. I'm going to set you back down at a different angle that's a little bit closer and try to talk you through it one more time since we are spe speeding up the video so much. We're going to slow it down on the installation of the skin since that's the hardest part. But initially we just took off the door hinges again. We'll take out our angle grinder again and we'll just start trying to rip down the door and just cut in that seam without hurting the inner structure. You can see I'm sped up a whole bunch, but I'm really taking it in little sections where I can actually watch the door split and I can just move on. I usually start the whole door just to kind of rip it down, but once you stop popping through, that's where you can start hurting the inner structure. After that, we took the air chisel out and we just start popping the spot welds. Turn on our attention onto the side of the door. What I like to do, I do like to start at the bottom of the door. It just makes it easier for me and work my way right up the sides. One side first and then I'll spin it around and do the other side. And that way I can actually feel 
where I'm lifting up and tugging up on the door if I have a spot that I missed and I just go back to and get. So you see, that's kind of what I'm doing here. You know, I'm working, I work the one side after the bottom. Now I'm working the other side. Once I know it's all cut, we'll go back through and you'll see in a minute and we'll start cutting that bracket again. I just want to reiterate when you start cutting this bracket, like we're about to do in a second, just please don't cut through it. Take your time you might have to save this bracket. Go over your old door skins and see what parts the door skins came with and what they don't. And that's gonna determine how aggressive you can be with cutting off this bracket right here. It's just a couple stitch welds though, so it's not that big of a deal to cut it off. I did cut the top of the door skin to give me easier access, but you can get in there with a, a spot weld cutter, a little deburring tool, and really just cut it out. And you see, it just comes right up. This was the door with a little bit of a rust corner and you could see the inside of this door has tons of surface rust in it. Somebody's going through it. Um, at this point, I was gonna do it anyway, but these doors, we are gonna strip down and take to the sandblaster and really try to get them looking brand new and perfect. Before we go to blaster though, we are going to sit there and fix the structural issues and the damage that was sustained in a wreck on this door frame. Uh, you can see I'm using heat. I got a monkey on a stick kind of pushing the door down and getting the major bend out of it. Once we're done and we got the monkey on a stick as much as we can do, we're going to go through because we can access the back of it with basically a giant punch and a little mini sledgehammer. Uh, I think a three pound sledgehammer and we'll just go ahead and we're gonna just drive it down. Where the heat is, is where it's gonna be able to give the most and you see it already flattening out. The monkey on the stick let go because it was releasing some of the pressure and we'll go ahead and finish beating it down. You can actually watch it flatten out. I did take some measurements on the frame of this door to make sure nothing did move while we were doing that, but I, w I didn't think it would because this door is basically going back to its natural form that it wanted to be. If anything, the accident kind of would have pulled that door in a little bit, but I still don't think it really modified it enough being that it only hit the top of the door and not really the bottom. But again, we got a cherry red. We're kind of using the frame rails of the car as our frame table to bend off of holding both sides. And we're just working out the arch in it. It's not perfect, but compared to what it was, it's a whole lot better. At this point, we're going to come back through with a hammer and dolly and just finish it up. So, I mean, you won't ever see this, but we know right now this door is a qual high quality repair that should last for years and years to come. Here's a couple still shots of the amount of rust that was behind both of these doors prior to sandblasting. You can really see that these door skins had to be removed even without the Bondo damage, just based on trying to prevent the rust and treat it and stop the future rot from coming back through the car. A lot of these cars are that way. So we'll go ahead and get to blasting these doors. Nothing really to this. I am just using a Northern Tool 100 pound pop blaster. I have a Merit Blast conversion kit on it, which kind of upgrades it and stops the clogs and just gives you a better nozzle side. This still is more of a home setup. I haven't upgraded my blast equipment yet, but I'm not really in the blasting business right now. My compressor is running a 25 CFM and I have an air dryer on it. So it is easier for me to blast, long term but you can use this setup at home if you're trying to do something like this i mean i'm using glass on here you're being safe and you see basically as long as you have a good enough compressor you might have to slow down if humidity kicks up and i am choked out on this which means i have some of the more pressure in the tank and i'm slowing the main airline down but there's a bunch of blasting videos. You see how when you get your setup right, it doesn't have to be the best setup in the world. And you can do small projects like this with no problem. It does eat through it pretty well. And it does a really decent job when it's all said and done for door skins, small parts like this. Most of the time, I'm replacing most of the car anyway. So it's really just the stuff like this that I am blasting, not full entire cars. If you ever heard me in the past too, I am not a person that ever thinks blasting the exterior body panels 
is a good idea. It will warp them. But stuff like this on this inner chassis, really you have to. It's just not worth it for someone like me to clean it all up with the amount of hours I would have into a project like that. Now that the doors came out of the blaster, they have tons of little pit holes and little rust holes where the sand ate the rust and the weak metal and went right through them. So what I'm doing right now, it's taken a while, but we're going to go through with the MIG welder and we're just looking for light. Anywhere that's light, we're just spot plugging them left and right. After we're done with that, we sped that up and we'll sit there and I'm going to grind it all down, especially on the outside to get it smooth. And I'm also going around the edges one more time with the grinder just because I think it does a better job than the sandblaster. I like the grinding disc edge when I'm spot welding, welding too. So a lot of times I will go back through on the edges and take care of this. Here's some shots of the door when as I'm welding, you can see all these were holes all the way through. When it's cleaned up, it looks like this. This is the bare metal work. When we get epoxy, it will look a lot better over it. Since I was touching and handling the door so much, Normally, if you blast something, you could go ahead and just throw epoxy on there, but I did handle them, trying to move them around. I didn't have gloves on while I was welding. So we'll go ahead and throw some wax and grease remover on these doors, make sure no spots come through. This is just a primer, but this is our base for everything. So we wanna make sure it's stick. Usually on projects like this, before I actually put the epoxy primer on, I'll go through all my edges and throw in the weld through the zinc coat primer. This is where I'm going to be welding. This is going to be working. I did both sides with the weld through primer, and I think it just conducts the weld better and transfers it versus burning the epoxy. It's made for that, so that's why I've done it on both sides. Once I do the weld through primer, I tape up over where I'm just keeping the weld through primer. And then we go ahead and I'm spraying uh, Omni bare metal epoxy primer. This is going to seal out any kind of moisture and stop future rusting. This thing, it's a base to any kind of metal work. I think this is the first step. Do a true good epoxy primer that seals everything up and then the rust issues won't be as much of a problem 30, 40, 50 years from now. Let's turn our attention back on the door panel. That bracket I was talking about that we cut off with the angle grinder, it's time to remove those. We're gonna go over why I removed that bracket in a second, but that's as simple as drilling out the spot welds, not going all the way through, and just running the air chisel right back up the whole thing and splitting it. Don't break the bottom part of that bracket. All right, so we got our door frames in epoxy, and let's get to the door skins. You see, I did prep them. There is a difference between the Dynacorn door panel and the AMD. It's kind of important if um, you're using these. The Dynacorn comes with these brackets right here. The AMD, you saw we cut those off, but it doesn't come with this bracket right here. So save this bracket, don't hack it up. You're gonna have to reuse it. We'll get to that in a second. Dynacorn, I noticed with their quarter panels and everything else, um, they seem like they usually come together with the trunk gutters and everything else. So just be aware, different parts manufacturers kind of require different set of procedures and what they do and don't come with. Main thing is, when you cut these door skins off as far as any other parts of the car, don't throw anything to that project away until you're done with this install because you might have to go back for it. All right, we're gonna go over some of the tools we might need. Um, I did prep the door, like I said. How I did it, this, you see the Dynacorn is actually bent a little more to AMD. I actually just turned the sandpaper backwards and I went this way with it, with the disc to get it down to bare metal. Everything is in weld through primer. Then what I did, I ran around the outside with a surface prep di disc and we're gonna go on the bare metal there. And for the AMD panel, I did get under here with that and got that bare metal for our install of this bracket right here, the top door support bracket. Like I said, everything here is in weld through primer and what you would do at home, we're not gonna do it here. We have our pneumatic hole punch or you would take drills and every now and then I'll put a hole in the door panel after it's all folded in, you would sit there and I would weld it up to make sure it doesn't move. 
The reason I say we're not gonna do this, we have a spot welder, I'll show you how we're gonna do it. We're gonna single side it, but, so you, I, we're not gonna use this, but at home, I would go ahead right now and punch the holes around it in the factory spot welds. So let's get to it. We're gonna start with the Dynacorn door panel. It's the closest one to the door frame. So let's move it into the way. Take the door off. All right, so this one, like I said, has the frame. So what we're gonna try to do, we're gonna try to get this side in first because it is bent. I know I'm not gonna be able to get that over that lip. You're gonna have to push it a little bit. The good thing is a tight fit is actually a little bit better. There it goes. Popped in there. And that area slid in. So you can see this is a good sign with the edges. We're right up against right here. And on this side, it's the same thing. We're right up against it. What we're gonna do, yeah, see we're right off, all the corners are right up against it and that's a very good sign. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fold down the corners right now um, and I'm gonna start working this center down. A lot of times you'll fit this on the door, you just fold down the corners, kind of maybe put a little tack in it, sit it on the car. Being that this fit really well on our car beforehand with the door frame and how the other door fit, I'm not too worried about it. If this thing had a gap and I can move it around, we would put it on the car, but I'm pretty confident. Plus the car doesn't have the quarter panel, so we got a little bit of adjustment on it. So let's go ahead and hammer out the corner of the frames. What I'm gonna do first, I like using a wooden block to start out just to kind of hold it up on the edge. And I do like this body hammer for this part of it. You just want to make sure you don't want to bend the bottom. That's why I like the wooden block. It has a little bit more give there to start out. We'll go to the metal block in a little bit. We'll add that to the blooper reel. We're gonna speed up the video just to save a little bit of time, but you just see I'm working right down the whole edge a little bit at a time. All right, you wanna just keep checking your bottom, make sure nothing's bent, we're looking good. Let's move over to the sides and start folding them over. You see, I didn't fold it all the way yet and I'll show you why. So right here, this is kicking out quite a bit, so we're gonna wanna hit with this side first. Make sure you're trying to match your curvature of your dolly on the back side so you're not modifying the door. Now, let's switch to the toe dolly. I want to do that to the other side, but just for the video's sake, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you how I do the corners and we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. So for the corners, you want to hit them down all the way. And I'm gonna show you, we're using a pneumatic door um, rolling tool. So we have to get it started on a corner. So we're gonna take the flat part. That 
edge looks good. Yeah, I have, probably have to go right here too. So we're going to follow the corner over there. We're going to do the same thing and we'll come back and I'll bust out the pneumatic uh, door skin tool and we'll see what happens there. All right, you can see the corners, you just want to really keep your edge on it and you're hitting flat. Now you can skin this whole door with this body hammer kind of working the same way I was doing. This, this way the hammer works good because you can kind of roll it in there and get a good angle on it. We're going to use our pneumatic door skinning tool. If you're only doing one, two of these doors ever, I don't know if a tool like this is worth it. We use this a little bit more. We do a couple doors, um, a few doors every couple months. So. What you're basically doing, this has a nylon piece that's kind of holding the backing and it's basically acting as a hammer. That's why we start on the corners and we're gonna run our whole run on it. You do have to get the skin mostly folded over and just follow it up with the door. So let's go ahead and do this and then we'll take it to the next step. Another thing too, as I'm rolling it, I'm turning it this way to make sure I'm pushing down and I'm not riding the door edge in. So that's another key thing if you get one of these tools. You want to make sure prior to using this that you have a good solid straight edge that's rolled over and the tool won't catch it wrong. As you can see, all this does and put a nice, it's a bunch of hammers that just keeps hitting. So we'll go ahead and we'll keep rolling this edge. We'll put you in a uh, time lapse and uh, we'll go ahead and finish out this door. You need to try to let this door skinning tool do most of the work. You can see I'm just making sure the door is not walking with it, but the tool is really driving the speed. You can't do this curve right here. This is going to have to be come back with a hammer. It just, that flat piece binds up. So we're going to come back in right here. Let's go ahead and finish hammering all these edges down, make sure they're sealed up, and then we'll go back through and we're gonna MIG our spots and uh, basically finish off this door skin. And uh, we'll start on the other one and we'll come back and weld them one time. We got this door all hammered around on the outside. We're gonna come back through with the MIG welder and we're gonna do both of these door skins at the same time. So let's turn our attention to this door skin, the AMD. There's some, um, well through primer here because that's where the sticker was so I just ground it down and threw some on there while I was doing it. Like I said, we took this bracket off the door. Uh, we cut it off with the door skin. I think it's easier for me personally. I have a spot welder too. You'll see we can't get the spot welder in if this is on the door and we left it to get the spot welder in. So, but you can leave this on the door frame if you want, drill out the spot welds, work the door right off of it, and then just come back through and slide the door skin on that way. However, I don't think it's gonna be that bad to install it this way. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna vice grip it on. You can see I already had everything kind of test fit real quick, but what we're looking at, and I'm comparing it to the old door, this is gonna be, this groove goes in the middle of the door skin that aligns it, and it pretty much lines right up with the top right there. So we'll go ahead and 
Vice grip that area on. We want to make sure both sides are about on the top. They don't touch the very tippy top, but that's about where we're looking at. Um, everything should about align where you're going to weld. So we're going to put welds in those areas. And the same thing over here. This should come right up and everything should align just fine that way. So we'll put our vice grip in there. We'll put our other one here and we'll get out our welder and start tacking it up. Yep, everything looks good there. That one looks good up there. Yep. Actually, we're gonna put a pair of vice grips on the edge too, just to make sure this doesn't wanna walk on us. All right. So this is how this goes. Um, let's get our spot welder. Like I said, if you did wanna install yours, you can go ahead and uh, put the holes in it and MIG weld it, but this is going to work fine for us. Let's let it fire up. So this basically is a resistance welder. It um, squeezes together and shoots a high rate of current and it, um, trying to see the and it creates like a factory style welder. So pneumatically controlled, we turned it up a little bit. I'm gonna go in the middle. We'll get positioned in here. And like I said, we're gonna go to the same areas that factory wood weld. So right there would be one of them. And you see, that's all it does. It puts a little factory weld right there and that replicates what you're doing. And you see, it doesn't burn. It's not even that hot, but I'll pull this vice grip off and you see how solid it is. So let's go through and we're gonna weld all of these. I'm actually gonna put a couple more in there. So looking at how we took these apart, there was only one spot weld in each of these areas. There's no harm in just putting an extra spot weld in it. So we'll go ahead and just add a little bit more. This is where I would go ahead and drill out your holes, your 516 holes, and put your plug welds if you're at home. And you can just weld it on first just like this. Or this bracket could stay on the door and you can weld it just like this with the plug welds on the door. I think it would be a little bit more in the way. So I think personally, this is the easier way to accomplish this whole process. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up the welder and then we'll come back and get our door skin back in place. But you can see, we got that. Now we're looking the same as the Dynacorn door panel. So it's gonna be the same exact install. We'll go ahead and throw this on there, put you in time lapse, and just show you the process of the AMD version. So here we are, we're carrying the door frame over to the AMD skin. You can see since we have this bracket on there, the AMD panel is actually bent straighter on the bottom. So I was able to kind of roll it under the bracket and in the door channel. At that point, again, we're starting on the bottom. I'm taking the wooden block and we're just working our way right around the door, slowly rolling the lip over. When you do it slow, it doesn't create any creases and everything and just starts cutting the door really well. Now the AMD panel did have a little bit more give uh, side to side in it. The edges were a little bit straighter, but the center seemed like it just had a little bit more play than the Dynacorn. This might have also been from just the damage from the accident. We don't know for sure, but we're just nickel and diamond. It, it did fit really well, but I could slightly tell the difference. Again, it's not a deal breaker, and honestly, even if it was the same AMD panels or Dynacorn panels on each of the door skins, we still could have had that variance in there. Top to bottom, they fit really well. You see, we now we got our lips all rolled around and we're pretty confident on where the door panel's sitting. We're just gonna run right around, just like we did on the last time, with its door skinning tool in time-lapse, of course. 
What I like best about the door skin tool is really just not hammering on the edges constantly, especially at the very end. You just start kind of working the edges too hard and pushing some areas out and you get slight ripples in it where this is just a constant smooth motion. All right, so second to last step on the door panels, we got a weld up the two spots that we cut off initially to remove the skin. So you could see it's just a, there's like a hole in here that we ground out and open back up. So we got our ground lead on the bare metal. Let's go ahead and weld this area up. I'm gonna put a little more factory weld than the factory did, just, just how I like to do it. This one, let's make sure we push it down a little bit. And this one, we're gonna stitch right up there. That's how it was from the factory. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and we'll come back with the spot welder. All right, so we got our pro spot. We're gonna single side this. So when I said earlier that you drill your holes with your um, 5 16 little pneumatic hole puncher, this is where you'll come back through and you just MIG it up to the door frame just to hold it in place. This is gonna do the same thing. Um, I'll just show you. So it's a single side. You sit there and hold it on we have our ground right there so it's going to complete the circuit and it will spot weld so you see we can actually lower the power a little bit on it and you see it puts a little spot weld there we're going to do a couple of these just to hold it and you see you can actually feel on the bottom when we go do this door, I won't clean it up. It'll actually spark through a little bit, but. And that's a, what the factory would do right there. That's what we cut off initially. If you're MIG welding this, just watch your heat setting. What you don't want, you don't want to burn through and come out the other side. Yeah, we're still coming through. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this door and we're gonna clean up and then we'll get the doors on the car and uh, take a look at them. And I'll give you my final thoughts on the AMD versus Dynacorn left and right door skin. We got our doors installed on the 73 Challenger. And man, I'm really happy the way this job came out. I'm real happy the owner decided on the new skins, especially on the one that just had the little bit of rust in the corner. Um, it was actually this one. But you see the Dynacorn, we'll do that side first. They fit really nice. Um, the whole length, the material's nice. The Dynacorn was nice. It did have that extra bracket in there. So if you look at your door and you see your brackets tore up or something's wrong under there, or it's been in a wreck and this is is bent, the Dynacorn might be your better option. It fits really well over here. You see the bottom profile is really nice along the whole thing. We're going to work it a little bit more, but you see also we're lined up how I set my doors. I aligned them off the rockers initially, being that we have nothing else on this car. We have new hinges on the door. And you see, I also took measurements on the Dynacorn and AMD. I took measurements there and both of the door skins were exactly the same. I took a measurement here and the Dynacorn was a 16th of an inch uh, shorter than the AMD over there. And I took one right there and they were both exactly the same. So all in all, the doors are pretty much matching up. I'd like to see, and we're gonna see in the future when we put our AMD quarter skins on, our quarter panels on and our AMD fender. That's gonna show if there's any difference between the Dynacorn and the AMD that we might have to address. So stay tuned for that. You see the door opens really nice. It closes really nice to hinges. There's no play in it. I'd say if you're gonna replace the door skins, go ahead and just get the new hinges too. I think that's the way to go. Um, everything, like I said, on this side lines up real good. You see the install on the Dynacorn. Let's go over there and check out the AMD and wrap up the video. 
Same thing with this AMD panel. You see everything lines up for the most part right here. We are gonna have to work this a little bit. We're gonna get the quarter panels on and there's gonna be some more adjustment. Right now, it's easy to adjust these doors when we're just lining off this rocker up front and then the door gap on the bottom off the rocker. But it's a base to start with and then we're gonna have to do the give and take and the compromise in the future. But the AMD panel, same thing, really happy. The curvatures look nice, everything's straight for the most part. We're gonna have to fix, you can see this is rippled out a little bit where I hit it too far, but we'll come back through when we get our fenders on and we're gonna gap the car and we're gonna profile it. So all this will be fixed and we'll make everything just that much better. But for the most part, the rough door panel install work good. You also see right here, that's our single side. Remember I said I was gonna show you, so you see the heat and penetration just from that single side weld coming through, working down that whole door skin. Uh, you see the measurements we took on the door skins on this side, and same thing. The panel, it just looks good. Everything's straight on it. it there's no play in it. It really starts transforming the look of this Challenger. Where we're at right now, so you also see when I'm putting these panels on, one more thing, I don't put any latches in them. When I line my quarters, I like everything to just close. I mean, I might tie something in here to hold it, but I don't want a latch lifting this up and fighting the hinges last minute. That kind of hinders what we're trying to do. So we'll leave the door just sitting like this while we put the quarter panels on. That's gonna be the next step. We're gonna get in here in the next video. We're gonna hopefully start installing the wheelhouses, the quarter panels, the rear end of the car, where this thing's gonna really start coming together on the back end. Hopefully here shortly, we have the parts and I'm gonna bring the video to you hopefully soon. Uh, stay tuned. Hopefully this video all in all helped you out. I mean, in general, I'm not paid by any of these companies. I don't have any sponsorship. If I am sponsored, I'll let you know before I push a product. I believe in both of these brands, the Dynacorn and the AMD. Um, if I would say, if you're gonna go with Dynacorn, I would personally go with the Dynacorn quarters too. I've heard good things about them. I'm using AMD quarters on it. We have AMD quarters on a Challenger right next to us. I'm very happy with them. So. Both companies, they put out good products. Um, we're gonna see how the two of them match up and uh, stay tuned for that. Like, comment, subscribe to our channel and tell other people about it. Have a good day.